Hello, Keith Rucker at VisualMachinery.org. So, I got a little project here for myself uh, I'm going to have to work on. Uh, this is the mower deck off of my lawnmower. I've got a, um, a 50-inch zero-turn Toro lawnmower that I use. I got about two and a half acres of grass that I have to keep cut at my house. And uh, over the last few years that we've had this thing, uh, on this shroud back here in the back, it has just worn through. And what has caused this is sandblasting. Let me zoom you in and I'll show you what's going on. So if you look on here, this uh, little shroud that goes around here that basically the grass and clippings and everything uh, go around, um, it, what's happening is, is where I live is, we live in a very sandy area. So when you cut the grass and everything else, you get sand picked up by the mower. And just the speed of the blade turning in here coming around, you can see it right around through here. It's actually hitting uh, this metal and over time it's just cutting it away. And right in here, this, this, this metal, I mean, it's just, it's like tinfoil. Uh, it's, it's just gotten so thin in there from that sandblasting over time. So uh, right now it looks like the only one that's really been affected is this uh, one here where the, it goes out the, uh, the, the flap on the end. I guess it's just where all the sand kind of accumulates and, and ends up a, uh, in a higher quantity on this end. Uh, but the game plan here is we're going to get in here with the grinder. We're going to cut these really ugly looking welds that are in here out and uh, remove this piece. I'm going to have to go find another piece of metal to go in here and uh, weld it back in place. And hopefully uh, we can keep right on using this lawnmower. This, is, this lawnmower has held up extremely well. I've had it for, I don't know, this is third or fourth year. Uh, and like I said, I'm cutting two and a half acres of grass with it probably uh, once a week, uh, pretty much from, you know, April through November. So uh, it's, uh, it, it sees a good bit of use. Let's get in here and get to work on it. All right, let's get in here and get to grinding. All right, guys and gals, I think we're about ready to start putting this back together. So first off, there was this piece here, and obviously that's not what it's supposed to look like. Um, I went by the place where I bought my lawnmower from and talked to them about it, and I asked them if they had this part. They said, no, they'd have to order it. I said, well, can I go look at one on another mower? They said, sure, go out there and look at it. So I went out and looked at it, made some measurements, and um, voila. So uh, basically I found a piece of two inch angle iron. Uh, I just cut that out on a bandsaw. Uh, there's two holes in the bottom. Now these are for carriage bolts. So they got a square hole. I didn't have a brooch, a square brooch on hand. So I just drilled a hole in there and I took a square file and uh, filed them out. It took me about 10 minutes. It wasn't that big of a deal. Uh, but now this is ready to bolt back down. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, there's just two bolts going through here with some nuts on the other side. So let me uh, get that in place. So next we have our mangled up little shroud back here in the back uh, that we need to replace. And it's about four inches uh, wide. It's a little, it was a little less than an eighth of an inch thick. And uh, I said, well, I'm going to go with something that's a little bit thicker when I replace this. So I actually got some eighth inch thick and it was about 27 inches long. And of course, it was rolled into a an angle. So I went by uh, Tifton Machine Works, local machine shop here in town. They, they're they real good about if I ever need a short piece of metal or whatever, they'll cut me off a piece and sell it to me if they got it. Well, they actually just went and, and using their shear, went out and cut some plate material and uh, they sheared me a new piece out. And as long as they had it, they went ahead and ran it through the rollers and kind of got it to the approximate uh, diameter that we needed, uh, using the old one as an example. And I, you know, I can, I can fine tune this. I can bend it around a little bit, but having that bend in there is a huge help. And again, looking at the original uh, on the lawnmower, it had this angle on there. So, you know, I did a little bit of 
cutting and whatever here to get this to go in here. And you can see the angle's not exactly right, but once I tack it in place, it'll close right up and, um, and fit right in here. So this is, uh, I think, ready to weld back in place. So we're going to get the welder out here, and uh, it just was kind of tacked in a couple places around here. We're going to just basically do it like it originally was. So a while back, uh, Jim Bollinger down at Do Right Fab sent me a little care package of some Lincoln Electric goodies, and I really haven't had a chance to use them. So anyway, I got on my do-rag here, uh, brand new uh, Lincoln Electric welding hood here which I really like, by the way. Um, I haven't actually tried it yet, but just fitting it on. Uh, we, we've got a little uh, auto darkening shade out here at the uh, museum that I use. And, but man, the, the headgear on this, it just fits so much better. It's got a nicer adjustment in it and a bigger, bigger screen that I'm looking through too. And he also sent me these uh, gloves, uh, these leather gloves. So I'm gonna put all this gear on and uh, get the welding. Back area right here. And get this tacked in place. Alright. That looks pretty good. This next one here, I'm actually going to tack it from the back and then because it kind of goes up against this piece and then we'll come around to the other side and uh, really weld it in place. I'm gonna, we'll come back and finish this. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of get it where it needs to be. And uh, then we'll actually get our welds down. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Welder in place now. There's a little uh, shoe on the back of this thing that uh, it kind of rides on so it doesn't drag that shroud and it's got a little bend in it so we're gonna heat this up uh, with the torch and uh, do a little blacksmithing over here to get a bend in there like I want and weld that onto the shroud. So we're just gonna heat this up a area right through here.
All right, let's cool that off. Now we're gonna go ahead and weld this in place. Like I said, this is just to kind of hold it up off the ground, keep this shroud from dragging, just a little foot. And uh, just like on the other side, we'll just weld it in place. There we go guys, all finished up. Um, pretty happy with how it looks. I think it's gonna hold up just fine. So while I got it apart, we're gonna go ahead and change the blades on it and it'll be ready to go back on the mower. Well, I think that's about a wrap guys. Uh, we got the new blades on, everything's spinning, no contact, that's just what we want. Um, got a new shroud in here, got a new pad here, got a new plate up on the front. This, everything clears. I think it's good to go. So uh, I will probably run by and get some paint and just uh, put a coat of paint on this because this was originally painted down here just to protect it. And uh, we'll get this put back on the lawnmower uh, so we can get back in the grass cutting business, uh, which is always a job we have from about April to November down here in South Georgia where I'm at. So um, I think we're good to go. Uh, Thanks for watching. This, quite honestly, is not the kind of work that I really enjoy doing in the shop. Uh, I enjoy running machines and making parts, uh, grinding, welding, uh, fabricating. Uh, while I can do it, it's just not my favorite thing. But it's nice to have the ability to do this. Uh, this piece of metal that I bought uh, was $8 and some change. I uh, had to have it cut and bent. And uh, other than the new blades, uh, that's all I've got in this repair. And the blades were going to have to be replaced anyway. Uh, a new deck uh, was going to be a little over between seven, eight hundred dollars. So uh, glad to be able to have access to the tools to be able to do this repair. Uh, you know, an eight, seven hundred and fifty dollar new deck cost me less than ten dollars to fix, uh, plus some time. So with that, uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.